my store generated more than the entire mall. Yeah. Than the entire mall, yeah. right? I've had lines at that mall that wrapped around the, the entire, entire mall. mall. It's crazy now. So for those of you who don't know, this is the man, JC. The he, shortest, fattest, oldest guy selling sneakers. So <laughs> that's arguably the biggest resale sneaker store on the planet. I haven't well, been to a bigger one. because of belly. It's not really because <laughs> of what I'm doing. How y'all, man? How you been, bro? Doing good, what's doing good, good, man. What's up, bro? How are you? Chilling, bro. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How are you, bro? This is my buddy Hater, man. He's yeah. one of the top sales rep right Go. here. So JC was out here for an event yesterday, the Sneakers Travelers. I ran into him. He had been meaning to come through here last sneaker con yeah. with everything going on. He was too busy. So he's here now. He's going to take a look around. Me and Larry love to ask questions and yeah, talk bro, history uh, and stuff like that. Ask so, away. And you know, for the record, it's just getting really overwhelming, like so much of what I do. Right. And I'm, I'm trying to, like you guys, run a business and still really kiss the babies and take the pictures <laughs> and, and learn and process and coach and build it, But I've. I purposely made time on this trip to, to come check check this out, man. This has been super overdue, and just the vibe of it is pretty dope. Yeah, there's a lot going on in here, yeah. man. Yeah. So if you want to take a look around here, yeah. we can kind of show you around. So our store is kind of separated, uh, kind of similar to how yours was. So you got Supreme, Supreme Bay, yeah. V-Lone, V-Lone, Chrome Hearts, Anti, everything in the plastic, just like you guys were doing it. I noticed that a lot of the stuff for the clothing has been converted over in your store more to just like in-house branding. It's not that there's anything wrong with the, the clothes that we've been getting in from consigners. Consigners have really allowed us to become kind of like this outlet for clothing, yeah, for, for sure. this type of clothing. But my entire process is how do I make it more efficient? How do I make it faster? One of the disconnects that I've had that pretty much every retailer or every small business owner has had is there's turnover. So you're investing all this time, energy, and effort into people, teaching them, coaching them, and at some point, it's over, right? The problem is that this is the most difficult aspect of our culture to authenticate. Yeah. This is harder mm -hmm. than sneakers. It was just too time consuming. Every single time that a new item comes out, like when a brand like Supreme drops something in a season, it's like, 250, 300 SKUs, that's 250, 300 new things you gotta <laughs> yeah. learn. Yeah. And the reality, let's be real, a wave runner is gonna be the same as this one and that one to an extent. So yeah, you yeah. know what shape to look for, what sizing, what smells, what textures. And the template aspect of it is less time consuming and the template creation than well, this. Well, not only that, but some of the teas that other stores use, they just find the, the supplier of the tea and right. print on it. So here, sometimes it's different fabrics, different boxes, right. so it's easy to point. Right. Here, if they're using the exact right. same tea, it's yeah, like, how do I even, how do I even separate? So, and then the other part of it is, is that we've always wanted to build a brand. And there's nothing wrong with selling this. You guys know I travel a lot. And like, the reality of it is, is I started feeling like, yo, I look like every other shop. Mm. And it's not that there's anything wrong with any other shop. It's just, if you could get it at your local store, why would and I get it? Why should you come here to get it? So we've been now kind of like forecasting, all right, what are the cooler brands that are like on the cusp of blowing up yep. that we should carry? And then, you know, I've been very fortunate to have, you know, partnerships for a small time with American Eagle that really allowed me to learn like how to create seasons of fashion. Because you had the actual right? machines in some of your stores. Yeah, we had Anajets where right. we were providing, like I wanted, I pretty much loaded up every vector file that we've ever made into this system and then you could make your own. Right. So now we're doing like a lot of cut and sew, we're, we're, we're doing fabrication with clothing overseas. You see the hats yeah. that I got coming out. And what I learned from American Eagle and my two collaborations with Nautica is that they work almost three years in advance. That's where I'm going, right? So next year, what you're gonna see is less designs, instead of every single city having something, less designs, and then it's just gonna be color variants being released depending on where we're at. And that's, and that's just like right? magic, the trade, that's where I right. met you at the trade right. shows. That's just the same concept is pre-booking yeah. in, in advance to kind of figure yeah. everything and, out. And we're also talking to like big box retailers. We're creating collections exclusively for those department bigger, stores. Which will draw people in just to get that specific one. Right. For sure. So I've been very fortunate over the years that the sneaker thing has kind of created all these extra layers because of 
how we've conducted business over the years, we're being provided opportunities that as a kid, you were like, you never thought would happen. Nautica. Right. Yeah. Nautica. Even in American Eagle. It's funny, the Nautica deal, like the way that even happened was wild. Like, you know when a family comes in and there's someone in that family or someone in that group of people that come in that's deer in the headlights. The music's throwing them off. Yeah. They don't know why they the prices run are the to prices. The, they run right? to the wall, bro. So, so you instantly go and grab them and you gravitate to them and you start talking and kind of calm their nerves down. I did that with someone. I saw the son run into shoes and the dad, you know, was like out of place. He felt out of place. And I was like, Nautica, man, like it's been so long since I don't like, I remember, I'm like, what <laughs> happened? I my dad's Nautica right? shirts. Right, so he was Nautica, like, oh, you know Tommy, about Nautica? He, he goes, what do you Ralph. know about Nautica? I was like, well, I know enough that I used to steal it when I was a kid. Like, what happened? Right? And then he was like, I work for Nautica. And I was like, oh, you know, and then we <laughs> what like, happened? right? So we start having this conversation and then it led to, well, damn, man, like, I didn't know people could have stories like that. You should talk to my boss. And I'm like, well, where's your boss? And they're like in New York. And I'm like, well, I'm going to New York tomorrow. You know, I'm actually going to New York wow. tomorrow because I had, I still have my pop up in New York. That's right. Yeah, yeah the one that and you I, had inside. Yeah, the, so was I had it inside the American. It Eagle, was I inside an American Eagle on okay. Soho, across the street from Adidas, yep. in a yeah, like historical that. building, and it was like, uh, that was a dream come true of for course. me because I used to walk all up and down that street when I was a kid, and and stopped there, shopped there. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had this meeting that led to another meeting that led to another meeting, and I just kept going up this chain, and like I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe I'm like talking to the people responsible for the decision making for this brand. Yeah. It's been around forever. Yeah. Right. And they're like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I got to bring it back to this. And I threw them like the old ghost face mm -hmm. cover. So I need to jump into your archives and I need to pull pieces. And I'm not going to say that I'm going to design them, but I'm going to give you suggestions as to what I think it would look like to bring back that era, because that era is when your brand to me was the most relevant. But it and also it correlates to the sneakers now too. Right, though, million percent. Yeah. So it was a great experience, but I learned from all of that. And next year, what you're gonna see from my brand is we're gonna get away from this because we're pushing so many units and my brand is getting to the point where it's being looked at as a real brand. So a lot of people say like stores and companies can come and go, but a brand can live forever. And so with that being said, that also can take your brand moving forward. If let's just say things like this don't last long and you have now branded yourself, you can live forever. Dope Couture was just a store on Fairfax then they created the brand Dope. Then he ended up selling and the brand went and started Yo. doing its own thing. Kith NYC, it was a store that sold yeah, at, everything. At tier zero counts right. and reaped in retail. He Alex used to be, and now his shit sells out. He was a runner at David Z, which is family for him, and he learned the game and then built. And now, as he's opening stores, like I've been to the one in Hawaii, right? And it is vastly different than what he got in New York and in and in Miami. It's just his stuff. Yeah, he's literally gotten his brand to the point where he doesn't even need to sell a shoe because the brand is so relevant that he could just. So merch. I mean, we bought and that's, kids, a, so. that's that's <laughs> for me. I, I call that the un-American dream because it's most people that ain't even American that are having that dream of building something that you have kids and grown-ups alike walking around with your logo rocking and then like pridefully like. I never thought it would get to that, but when I saw that if I put in the elbow grease into it, that at some point I would have enough hours and understanding and have the right resources and opportunities to create quality product and. I'm excited about that venture of it because the sneakers are scary too. Let's be real. I'm getting older, I'm getting fatter, I'm getting slower, and <laughs> it's like it's harder for me to move. He's just eating good. He's getting eating, money. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm eating. That's five I'm star eating. tummy, big dog. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm eating worse, but I'm eating more. There's good meals in yeah, between, but yeah. I, I'm on the road all the time. Yeah, it's yeah, fast food all the bro. Yeah, when we travel, you know? we're the when same. we travel, it's like I could be working out tough. And then once we go traveling and we get back, I don't even want to work out anymore because yeah. I eat five star meals and every every city we go to, we try to eat whatever is popping. The in local that city. cannolis yeah. and desserts. <laughs> and, yeah. So with that, with that, all that being said, it's like with the shoes. Like I still know shoes. I still like when a new shoe comes in and I see my authentication team grabbing it and looking at it. I'm like, what are we looking at? Help me understand. But I can't always be at that level with my brand. Not that there's anything wrong with it or that it's under me, but it's like, that's not what the brand needs from me right now. Sure. We're a team, right? You have a team. You're my point guard. You're my shooting guard. He's your small forward. That's your center. 
Who's your coach? Yeah. Are you gonna ask your point guard to go outside and handle the parking concessions? Are you gonna <laughs> ask yourself yeah. to go sell popcorn? Everything's delegated out. We played all those roles until now we're right. finally <laughs> up there. Oh, yeah. Now I have the people I mean, to be able to do at, those like, things. I mean, look at like look at me. There was six figure spending at sneaker shows while holding a camera, while conversing, yeah. while yeah. doing the intake while going at six in the morning to the show, while leaving at three in the morning, but it's a two day show, so I'm back in there at six in the morning the next day, yeah. doing it all over again. And now those same moments are, okay, I got party of six. You're my camera guy, you're the camera guy's assistant, you're the guy doing the intake. I have a system that's submitting all the mm -hmm. items so you don't have to type it, I scan it and it uploads it. We're not going to FedEx anymore. We're yeah. not carrying it on the plane in duffel bags. We're, we're like, we went from duffel bags to FedEx. Monster Energy Trucks. Monster, yeah, monster Energy monster Trucks. Monster <laughs> trailers driving it back. This fool had Monster Energy Trucks at SneakerCon last year. Yeah. Two of them, I believe, right? Yeah. It's like one of those things where if you could pitch it and Build the value for sure. Yeah. Someone is gonna give you the opportunity, and and I like that. you know, yeah. like <laughs> I was like, man, you telling me you got this truck doing nothing? Like it's even with nothing? Like y'all just I saw when out. I came to the parking lot. You know, I took a video of it. Like, there. Yeah, I was like, yo, so let me let me break this down to you because I used to work at FedEx way back in the day, and I used to unload trucks, and I was in charge of sorters. I was like, so you telling me that's completely empty? I'm like, yo, bro, that's 24 pallets, 24 Gaylords, 150 pairs per Gaylord. I could fit this many pairs. Can y'all drive this back? How much would you charge me? Right. And then <laughs> and just underbid like, what FedEx would be. They were like, no, we got it. Oh, okay. never mind. <laughs> I used around. to say, I'm the reason why this mall's still open. For I'm sure. the reason why this mall's going too close. You're I'm, the only I'm, reason why I ever went to that mall. <laughs> <laughs> I never go any other store. I just went to yours. The last year I was there, my store generated more than the entire mall. Yeah. Absolutely. Than the entire mall. Yeah. Right? I've had lines at that mall that wrapped around the, the entire, entire mall. mall. <laughs> oh, it's wow. crazy. 15,000 people just waiting to come in the store, standing outside for two days. I'm at a point where, okay, I needed to come back because there's some things I missed. Yeah. And these are the things I need to correct, which is what I showed you. Yeah, what we talked about. Yesterday. Which is gonna, if it, if that, yeah. It's changes gonna, everything. Definitely like, I'm li out. like, no secret, I do QR codes. QR codes, you can scan it. And I, instead of having to have all of them, which there's nothing wrong with this, because sure. that's what I used to do, and this is the eye candy. There's days where your staff, or even you, if you, you know, if you got out late last night and didn't sleep, or having a bad day, or got something on your mind, you overlook it. Hey, do you have a size nine? Nope. Is this the cheapest one? Yup. And it's not. QR code helps me. Only have to put out one. Tells you all the information. But that system helped me build to a brand that on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday sees 17 to 20,000 people in the store. Knocking them out just like We're putting this. up crazy numbers, yeah. but then at the same time, while you're seeing 17 to 20,000 people in the store, it's taking you 15 minutes to get in, 20 minutes to find your shoe, 15 minutes for the shoe to come out, 20 minutes for you to pay. Every single one of those steps, from the waiting in line to looking for a shoe, requesting the shoe, to standing in line, someone leaves. I'm sitting there watching my store put up like Nintendo numbers, bro. It's massively humbling, but I'm watching money that I'm not making. I'm not losing, but I'm losing because I didn't lose the product. Could be more. And though. it'll sell at some point, but I could have done Maximized. three times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, three times because yeah. if I could have cut any of those problems in half, I get half the sales back. And that's why we have people in the back because I let them know like if somebody comes back here to grab a shoe, yeah. make it quick because the attention yeah. span of the guy yeah. who pulls yeah. the trigger yeah. could change yeah, in a couple of minutes. They're shopping off of anxiety. Oh my God, oh, yeah, that's my it. size. I can justify it. this price. Let's go. So now my new system, which I've already built, that QR code aspect, imagine being able to just scan the one item, say, oh, that's my size, buy it now. And then it turns into a deli. Yo, Jim. Yeah, Here's your order cool number, brand, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, order, order number, number 35. Yeah, I'm turning <laughs> yeah. it into McDonald's. We're a tech company now. Yeah, right? <laughs> you have like, to be. And yeah. so, at this point, what this is going to show, if I could show that it's efficient and I don't run myself into the ground with it, is another layer that I think people are going to come back and look at what I'm doing and say, damn, that works. You know how many people come to my store, other business owners, the amount of relationships I've been able to build because people are like, man, I had to come in here and see how you're doing it because I don't understand and I'm getting to where you're at. And and then that becomes like this type of relationship. And then now we're working on the side. There's shoes that we're buying, creating, con like it's beautiful. The yeah. crazy thing about that is he said that people come to him is like, man, and try to get a game off of you. When I first met him, he taught me the Dewey Decimal System. We were just touring the back and we were just like, why? But we were what's up having with problems dots? in the back of our store where we couldn't find shoes fast enough. He explained to us the Dewey Decimal System about how he marks different dots, different colors for different categories. Immediately the day we got back, me and Lay went and ordered dots 
us. They came in, we dotted our entire back, times cut in like three fourths, yeah, yeah. man. It was like so much faster. So now what I'm doing and I'm working on is RFID. So think like you got your your AirPods. Yeah, right? and you could just put your phone. And up you're too like, and okay, it. where the heck is it? And then the thing just keeps beeping till you find it. Yeah. So okay. it's like GPSing every single shoe in yeah. the store. That's where I got it. So going. wait, yeah. so if someone wants a shoe and then they click the button yeah, for it. Yeah, it's not gonna take, matter where you throw it because it's, it's like just Marco Polo and yeah. you just find it. But like shoes that are like someone got lazy and put the shoe like. Bro, oh, yes. I'm just throw this right here. Story yeah. of and our this life. size 13 <laughs> should have been over here. Yeah. And you've been over here for two hours looking for the shoe, and you're like, yo, it's here. How's it sold? Yeah. It's yeah. here. They ain't nobody steal this shoe. This I'm place. watching, I'm doing inventory. But the shoe was over there because the dude was drinking a monster and was like, oh shit, I forgot. And just put it put it where they put it. Drinking a monster. Yeah. 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 Was, shot the monster. Yeah, I was about to say, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what you were just doing. Yeah. I knew what you were doing. Y'all's door is so huge that that is, absolutely makes a lot of sense for you. Even I get anxiety, whether it was oh, your I'm old store or your new store. Store, it's, it's too much. So, yeah. It's it so very much. overwhelming. And, 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 and I liked it, it, but not in a bad way. Not at it's all. just like it's a museum. It's yeah. hard to correct. So it's hard to dial in and say, yeah. okay, this is the one. So thing. that's why we built like QR codes that'll allow you to scan and you know, it'll show you everything in your size. Yeah. So yes, I want you to look at the four thousand plus that I have on the wall, but I don't expect you to think that nah, every single shoe you can is now in your filter size. down, see right. what's in. That's your how size. our website is. So yeah. I got we just four thousand different shoes. You're a ten and a half. I got at least five hundred pairs in your size. Why would you want to look at all four? 4, yeah. Take the picture. Take a seat, scroll yeah. through a little bit, figure out yeah. what you like, and then we'll bring them yeah, out to man. you. So it's been it's been a lot of fun kind of like trying to crack this Rubik's Cube of retail through sneakers and to have so many people paying attention yeah. and like rooting me on and like providing the product for us to try it. And the fact that seven years later, we've turned the revenue that we've turned no checks have ever bounced. Growth is mm. still happening. And we've been able to put so much, like bro, my brand is put back almost $98 million back into the community of sneakers. We've done shoe drives, toy drives. We've paid for heart transplants. We've paid for funerals. Heart transplants? Yeah, bro. That's we've done amazing. all sorts of crazy stuff. Wow, that's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And, and, it, and it's been because the community is like, we rock with you, Jay. Keep at it, Jay. Keep going. And so you feed off of that. You try to get back. Don't get twisted. Like our sneaker con episode, there's people who are like, oh, you guys are paying too much or why are you bidding those prices? And then you have people in the comments that are like, thank you for providing small businesses yeah. with money. Like you guys are, what do you always say? Giving back. You know why I like you, going to sneaker con? What's to the community? It's what term you always use. Stimulating the economy. Stimulating the economy. That's what he always economy. says when yeah. we go to these I, events. I've said that a few and times. And it's just I'm like one of those things where it's like today. everyone's so eating, eating at that point. How many times through Throughout your journey of a business owner, have you had a friend, a family member tell you, this is stupid, you shouldn't, go get a job? So my own mother told me the day I opened my store, you should probably go get a job. Right? Now think about it. My business has generated over a hundred million dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah. since I started. Yeah. Something that started with one shoe. My mother told me go get a job. Yeah. Right? The people that are vendors at the shows like SneakerCon or Sneaker Travelers like yesterday, most of those guys are us. Three months to a year and a mm -hmm. half into their craft and mm -hmm. their profession. Mm -hmm. They still have that bottleneck mm -hmm. of someone's in their corner telling them, this is stupid, you shouldn't have traveled here, no one's gonna buy those shoes, da 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 da. And you see it in their eyes and how they're conducting business. And I, I've had so many interactions with people and hours invested into trade shows and how this show works. I know it and I can almost smell it. And when I go to that, when I see that, I'll buy the whole table. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And it's not because I'm gonna make money off the table, because I probably won't even. It's just so he can go home and be like, I sold my whole table. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But how do you feel, mom? And then the yeah. other part <laughs> is, is you guys are watching and you're like, yo, did you see this little short, fat, red haired dude with like the one leg that limps, but he got a mouse cat and he ate a Slim Jim while carrying a table? <laughs> I saw right? you dragging the table. Yeah. To see <laughs> yeah. He's gonna go home and do the Kodak spread to his yeah. mom with the money. I've done some pretty, I've done some pretty ignorant pictures that'll probably never be on social. But it's been it's been fun, man. I'm living yeah. the dream and and it's because of people that have allowed, man. And I just wanna keep giving them that For energy. Sure. I think I got three more years of really kind of like figuring out this Rubik's Cube. And then I have to be okay with disconnecting in the sense of I can't do everything I'm doing anymore. It's not that I don't want to, it's just that I don't want to be that old boxer that you're like, yo, he's 50 years old. Yeah. Relax, George Foreman, sit down, bro. Yeah, like you yeah, for sure. How much more do you need? And 1, it's not that 000%. it's not that I ever need it, but it's just 
I'd rather people look at my brand. It's gonna be better for the, like the message of the brand. If I walk away and I leave you saying, he had another five, 10 years in a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you but, always be like Mayweather and come back. Nah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I do, it's definitely gonna be something so different because for me, it's about like taking and unpeeling and then figuring out every layer, processing and then putting it back. It's like when I was a kid, I show my age, I used to pull apart VCRs yeah. just to figure out what the VCR looked like, but I could never put them back together, right? Yeah. Now I've learned how to put them back together. So real quick, we've been talking about just like the come up and everything. When I met you a couple of years ago, you explained to me kind of the history of how you were homeless. And one of the things you used to do was wait in line for sneakers. And then that kind of just evolved into kind of where you are now. If you can be real brief and let these people understand because we're talking about kids kind of taking that leap. What was that leap for you and what was it that you had to do? I just looked at the way people were doing stuff and I was like, okay, what would make me not want to do it? How much time, energy, and effort do I have to put in for, for the next guy to say stop? You want to show up a day before? I'll show up two days before. You want to go two days before? I'll go four days before. You want to go a week before? Two weeks. I don't care. Yeah. It was never about the money for me. It was about scaring those that thought that they were going to take away from what I was doing into saying, I can't compete with that. A lot of times I was standing in lines and I didn't even have the money for the shoes I was standing in lines for. <laughs> I was bringing TVs, PlayStation, playing people for money, barbecue grills, barber chairs, like everything I'm doing in the store, I was doing the recon work yeah. when I was standing in the lines. Waiting in line to now having people wait in line to go to your store, how insane is that? And the same mall where I used to shower in the fountains in front of that place and used to get kicked out and there's still security guards that used to kick me out. That still work there? That still work there. It's like massively, like from not having a car uh, to driving, circle. to driving what I'm driving yeah. to so there what's... and everybody feel like, hey, Mr. Lopez, like yeah. instead of, hey, get your bum ass up out of here, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. wild. What's the longest you waited in line, you would say? Uh, what sneaker, if you can remember? LeBron, LeBron 10 cork, I waited a week, I slept two hours. I had 20 chairs, I had a gun pointed at me. Like, dude, dude cut me in the line. Like, I was third in line. I somehow wound up 18th because I got strong on, like, real shit. And I went back to that dude and I said, this is the, the last time you come in my city and eat before me. And that's when the whole, you want to be there a week? Yeah. We'll be there too. You yeah. want to do this? We'll do that. And I was always first. If I went first, might as well be last. If you ain't first, you're last. That's how, that's how I, that was the mentality I had with the streets. That was the mentality I had with the streets. Then, then I got hit to, Paying managers off, yeah, and then I of then I went through my whole little Dalai Lama stage where I was coming to malls like this with a dolly on a Wednesday, pulling out with the dolly at six, seven in the morning with the pairs already, but you still putting in raffle tickets. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I got 86 from all the stores. Then I was just like, you know what? Chasing the streets isn't enough. That's not scale. That's not that's not life changing. I need to work with others. I need to put everybody's yeah, money up, before. Popping the trunk isn't the safe yeah. method. Yeah. At some point, something bad's gonna happen. Yeah. I'll just shift gears a little bit. I just want to kind of break you down. Right yeah. now, we're in the easy board, majority of the easy room. Yeah, your best sellers. So yes, these are bread and butter. If you had to choose one silhouette, 350, 450, 500, 700, V3. I like the 700s a lot. I mean, at one point, I have 41 pairs of Wave Runners in my sauce in my personal collection. I'm, I'm an excessive... <laughs> like all-white forces? You just that was like my all-white force. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably one of the greatest shoes ever made, in my opinion. And I think that in 10 years, Kanye is going to be looked at bigger than Jordan. In my opinion, Kanye has been bigger than Jordan. Not because of the money that he's generated, but the fact that he made basketball shoes not cool anymore. Right. He literally changed the entire way sneakers are sold and you are now looking for that next relevant act. Yeah, you're looking for a, or the, the next silhouette. The next Travis, <laughs> the next this, the next that. And I think that he's in an amazing creative space. Some people are criticizing what he's building and saying it looks trash, I but it's not shit. true human trait that when you don't understand something, you speak about it in a negative light because you don't understand it. But when this was dropped, everybody said it was the worst, and this is the most common shoe you yeah, see this, out right this now. This is my favorite. Uh, mine's 700 yeah. as well. Yeah, a lot of the guys on. in here, they, they all, all wear 700. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one, bro. This is what we call the private selection. So this is the... This is the creme the, de la creme. The, the yeah. million dollar sneaker room is, is another term for it that we use. 
So if you don't know, which I don't know if I've spoken to you before, but so we're non-consignment. Right. So everything we own. Right. And so if we can't afford it at that moment, or you know, we're not even going to take it in. Right. It's one of the situations where before I had my own store, I did it for the man. Right. And we did consignment. And it's just very shifty because not everyone knows how to manage money properly. Well, not only that, but the other part too is just if you're not making it as efficient and as data intensive as possible for your consigner, your consigner's not really going to be motivated to provide you Correct. enough product for you to justify having. Or you get pissed off and take everything and then your right. store, half your store's empty one. You right. have a whole system where people can log in to the back end, upload their product. Yeah, I've been I mean, spending $15,000 to $20,000 a month for the last seven plus yeah. years. Yeah. Into so, building a system that's staggered onto a system that everybody has access to, but like that car that you mod to have that yeah. nice little sound or that extra little pump, yeah. I got it doing all the stuff it ain't supposed to be doing. Yeah. And I'm just adding and adding and adding, but I have north of 30,000 consigners. Yeah. Jeez. So even if <laughs> yeah. so I have 30,000 consigners, 40,000 pairs, my average transaction is $400, so at a bare minimum I got $16 million in sneakers yeah. at my disposal right yeah. now. Yeah. That's lowballing. That's just saying every shoe costs $400. Right, 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 right. You got shoes that are 30, 40, 50 racks, yeah. right? Yeah. So I don't have $16 million to go buy $16 million worth of shoes. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I'd rather take my money and build something that at some point will be generational yeah. or at some point another brand will see the value and, and say then, yeah, hey here you go we can make that faster for you we could we could scale that for you this could be times a thousand if you'd like and i'm just knocking out all the kinks building the value slow playing it because right. i'm in no rush but at the same time i got three years <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, but see, you're smart about it. I don't feel you like you're getting into it to I, make it efficient like that. I don't feel like he's going to stick to this three-year plan. I don't either. I have to, bro. <laughs> Too many grades. Have you seen the Blazer Lows yet? The ones that got postponed? I haven't seen those in person yet. All right, no. let me get a key real quick. Ian's really good at getting the early birds in, sometimes two, three, four months in advance. So we've had this one for over two months. We've already done the episode on it and everything. Then, after the passing, they did the postpone. And so now it's not for sale, we just have it up here until further notice, along with, this was the actual one that Virgil posted on his IG story. He said, wow, finally a picture I could like that I can post. And then that was the actual shoe. Wow. So that one's supposed you know to come out I next have, year. You know what I have, and I've had for almost a year? I have the orange Futura uh, Off-White Dunk. The Dunk? Yeah. Yeah. I had it posted it over a year ago. I posted it last year. Was that the one that had the, does that have the? It looks like the New York yeah. Men's colors. Yeah. It's all splattered yeah. out. Larry says if we ever go to Colorado, that will be his shoe. Yeah, <laughs> that would be his shoe. Wear in, in the mountains. I'm glad I was able to have something in here that you hadn't quite seen. No, man, but this hard. is dope. Even the stuff that, that I did see, like it's still like. How do you feel about the Dunks just being pumped? out literally I get it four or five colors of mine I get it we all have those things that are tried and true and, and, and keeps the lights on and, and you have to go but I'd like to see someone in that office or someone in that department say we have to keep the quality of the product here correct mm -hmm. this is a prime example for yeah, me I'm not a fan Huge and disappointment. I've seen a lot of people I get, feel like quality is I've seen very a lot of just like get beat up on that shoe. Bro, yeah. Yeah, we were highly disappointed about it. From what I've noticed, you wear dunks a lot though, right? Yeah, what size is this? Uh, <laughs> let's find out. Yeah, one year is that. So, being that you are a dunk person, how do you feel about now everyone wearing dunks? Do you feel a certain It's way? great because it's the only department in Nike that has stories. Now, seven years ago when I first got my store, I was wearing dunks, Iron Maidens, Iron this, like skunks and yeah. puffs and everybody was like, oh my god, you have like everything. And then it stopped, right? Because it went to Adidas and it was NMDs, NMDs and Nice Kicks yeah. and Meats. So that, I had yeah. to put, they went and collected dust. And then when it came back around, everybody was like, yo, when did this happen, bro? Right. When did you get Something these, you bro? And I'm like, yeah, yo, go look seven years ago. This is oh. the first time you yeah, see Yeah, those come out here in the next few months. That's a nine, eight and a half. Oh, it's like eight and a half? Besides what you... Eight and a half. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Eddie, can you go grab the box for Yeah, can you go... Can, uh, can you ship oh, these? I'll it's take It's a no these. box. Oh, yeah, then I'll take them. I just need them shipped because I don't have any more room in my uh, thing. Well, guess what, JC? The year is for free. Nah, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll grab the other one. I've been offered these a whole bunch of times, too. And I passed on them, and then I seen Money Kicks, the mm -hmm. little kid mm -hmm. from the owner, the sneaker driver's son. He had them on, and I was like, damn, this little kid made me 
<laughs> you can tear them apart. There's gray underneath the bottom of it. But it, I think it's cooler with the mummy wrap on top. Yeah, no, these are great. How do you feel about bases? Are you a fan of the skate studs and the and the we air, have air some, styles? Uh, it's not something that we regularly sell, but I do have a very small niche, like one percent of the one percent. That's like, do you have any bait? And like, I got tired of saying no. Correct. So we reached out to a couple people. Marina Blues. See those yet? I have. Them. My, my favorite part about the shoe is that they didn't do the red Nike and they kept it color coded to yeah. the shoe. It's very uniform. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. Like that, that hue is very. Yeah, crazy. yeah. We put them next to the Royals and we were trying to compare it. It's completely well, it's it, it's different. Yeah. It's different for yeah, sure. It's night and we did a little TikTok on it and everything. This is solid. Yeah, I like this one too. Well, I'm glad he found something and he found wow, something man. in here. That's wow. why I like it. Found a feel because I'm probably going to. Let me get that mummy. And <laughs> Is that your size? Yeah, it's eight and a half. Cool. Which one of y'all is an eight and a half nine? None of us. This is no one. It's no teams. One. Is a, our employees the only one? None of us. We're all uh, 10, 10 half, and thirteen. Spanish. You know, I sold these for like twelve dollars. I won a twelve. When I did my forty dollar holiday sales, um, I sold one of these for twelve dollars. I got those at Kicks up front for I believe like ten dollars under retail. Honestly, I didn't know what they were. Whenever you pulled them out, I had to look them up just to triple check. You got a great collection, an amazing store, man. I wish you guys much continued success, and uh, I'm just excited to see where the brand goes over the next couple of years and the content that you guys are putting out. I think it has the right intentions, and you're going about it the right way, and it's beautiful, man. You're inspiring a lot of people to. I appreciate to that, man. It's a lot. Of it's one of those things where we yeah, just we've it, yeah. been doing it for so long. It's just timing, yeah. you know, and also doing it and, differently than everybody yeah. else. And, and so. getting comfortable in your skin and, and being able to stand in front of a camera. Yeah. This, this guy, yeah. before we did this, he was I would never high for camera. Oh, bro, I hate this guy. Why do you, okay? So I'll tell you the secret on the on the peace signs. It's because I'm at a point where I've taken so many pictures, I don't know what to do with my <laughs> yeah, hands. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. That's what I do with my so hands. I've been doing this for like two years, but I'm gonna switch it. Next year we're doing like we're doing backward. Okay. Yeah, we're doing this. So we'll next year get used to this. I'll get ready. Yeah. I'll get ready. I heard it first here. He's switching it up. He just showed me an Urban Necessities receipt from 2016. Look, Who? What, he, you? look what he bought. And look what he paid. This shit hurts my heart. <laughs> Tell them what shoot it. Again, but it was an easy 350 V2 red solo with the stripe. Was that part of the, the Black Friday release where they did those three colors or was that a different yep. one? Yeah, yeah so was. they had the 600 like the bucks. Olive. Yeah, yeah them hoses like 1400 yeah. up now. I got now. 620 from you. <laughs> There's a receipt, you know Daniel Anderson? There is a Nike dunk receipt like this long. And I think he spent under 200 bucks. But from my store. Boom. So this is from January 2017. Before the dunks came back. Before dunks, yeah. Paparazzi dunks, size 12, DS, $20. Plum dunks, worn, $20. What? Strummer dunk low, DS, $20. Ghost Dunk High, worn, $20. Budweiser Dunk, $20. Ron Burgundy, $20. Shim Dunks, $20. <laughs> Marshall Amps, $20. Bison Dunk, worn, $20. DS Heineken's, how much oh you think? God. I mean, now they're up there, about two, $2,000. $20. Oh, $20. Oh, <laughs> Shanghai Dunks, $20. No. Thrashing Dunks, $20. His, we, we had to charge the tax. He paid two hundred and fifty nine dollars for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pairs of dunks, size twelve. Now, if you had to do a guesstimate, how much do you think that all be worth right now? Just throw oh, a well, number the, out there. Well, the Heinekens are like ten Gs. Yeah. I gave away four hundred and fifty pairs of dunks, size twelve, for twenty dollars or less in three days. That's insane. So, we like to do this cool thing that when people come through and do episodes with us, we like to bless them. So today okay. you are blessed with these, oh, but I'm gonna charge you for these. Yeah, no, please, I, I wanted you to charge me for both. Nah. But, uh, let me get a couple points on that thing so I can pay for the next hotel. Yeah, the next, the next right. flight. You know I have 85s. My pair is so cooked, but the leather's still soft. It's not hard anyway. <laughs> on my on my bread and my Royals, they're nice, but these black and whites and neutrals I'm finding, which are harder to find, no. it's just all the the top lining colors gone, and then of course the insoles yeah, crusted yeah, yeah. all the way. I'll show I'll show up when I get back home. I'll send you pictures of my. I bought those and I bought the uh, the yellow maze from back. We got one more thing to show up, Scott. Oh yeah. Oh, the so flies. Have you seen them? 
Yeah. Oh, you already seen them? I've been off the deal. Seeing Larry threw them on the table and everything. Yeah. Nah, it's a good shoe. The quality's amazing. Soulfly has just been, like, they've been doing a good job. And they got that relationship, man. Like, they get to do a lot of stuff yeah. most people will never get the opportunity to But how to do you do. feel about the crazy, like, all the patterns and, and it's, materials? It's, I mean, so the textures are great. The color palette that they decided to go with, nothing about this shoe tells me it's Miami. I mean, it's cool, but I don't I don't have an outfit to go with that, so I don't even know how. I said I'd wear it with a suit, with some crowd pants. That's all I think I can think of. It's just a lot going on, but I'm going I'm to take it. I'm going to ride with it. That way I can just branch out of my element of what I normally wear when yeah. that time comes. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I watched, uh, I believe it was the Slobby Robbie episode when he had a show and he brought you jerseys. Are you still into collecting jerseys? I slowed down. I, I did a YouTube video where I wore, I thought it would be a good idea to wear every jersey at the same time and then be like, I got this one and this one and this one. <laughs> One and this one. It was the dumbest I thing I could have done. Oh, it's it's embarrassing. I had like 750 jerseys at one point, and it got to the point where like I was just buying, and I just stopped researching like what stuff goes for, and then I got hip to that. I that's what I was doing, and I got taken for a ride on a couple, mm -hmm. right? Just because I'm supporting people, and I just like. And I'm fat, bro. There's, and, then, and then those champion jerseys, when you're fat, sometimes- Which the, size do you wear in champion? Print, I, well, man, I, whatever I got is probably three sizes too small at this point, but I was like uh, 44, 46, 48. Okay, so I'm a 48 and I collect champion jerseys, so moving you know, I forward. Got a, I got a Len Bias. I got a Len Bias, I ain't never busted out. Really? Len Bias, yeah. I'm looking for Mutombo right now. I have multiple Mutombos. I have the multiple. The Hawks one is what I want, yeah, the black I, version. I got all the, the Mahmoud Abdul Raouf jerseys, the Chris Jackson jerseys. I got a black Isaiah Ryder UNLV. I've got some crazy ones, bro. That's I'm a little not, too much. I got That's Reg, out there. Reggie Lewis. I got Reggie Lewis. I had all the all the greats. I had all the Reggie Millers, all the Reggie Lewis, all the all the uh, Larry Birds, all the... I got a few like, Larry Birds. Think, think, like the one that I've been chasing, if I, I get, I'll probably never buy another jersey again is the cloud blue like official Drazen Petrovic jersey like the game one shit. you've never found that one before no I can't like, I, I've, like I've never I've never uh, I've never seen one for less than 15,000 oh golly I can only imagine having 700 jerseys then uh, the, yeah, the cost, I you, the I cost you've spent on oh, jerseys or the space, the space in the space in the closet yeah I, I, get, I hoard but then I shed like I'm about to do a drop on shop 2J's closet okay so let me tell you how much stuff I pulled out of this one closet I hired an employee okay. who has invested 90 hours in a data entry, and he's still not done. Right? <laughs> no, it's embarrassing. The closet, it's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Like the Excel spreadsheet, what he has entered into the system is almost $400,000 worth of clothing that's listed at under market value, and I got probably 20% of it still has tags on. I don't gain so much weight, yeah. or like my my interest has changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So well, don't let yeah, the weight be the cause of why you get rid of it, because you can always get rid of the weight. Nah, I have no motivation in the working out, bro. <laughs> Tell me about it. I got so none. <laughs> no, like I'm I walk twenty thousand steps a day on average. Like that's enough, bro. I'm at a point where I'm like passionate about being able to do nothing. Yeah, it's such a great oh, joy I get for me geeked. when I have nothing. <laughs> I to get do. geeked when I get home. I'm like, yep, not even turning the TV. Yeah. 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 See, the thing of this, yeah. me and Ian will continue yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Larry's gone at nine o'clock, yeah. and then he'll check back in at 8 in the morning or 7 in the morning. He'll respond to whatever me and Ian were talking about. Like, I think the most Without. amount of physical activity I have in the day is probably the scrolling on TikTok for two to three hours a night when I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to bed right now. But if now. that's your unwind, it's like, you know. Yeah. Okay, okay, now let me ask you this. Do you, TikTok is your vice. Right now, yes. I pretty much don't follow anything. Just, I just a for you page. Uh, whatever pops up. And then based off of what I've liked, I keep getting more stuff that is like somewhat like, yeah. and yeah. I find, yo, I go through, I'm in a rabbit hole so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'll we, be at the we airport. got Tico for our TikToks now. I'll be at so the airport just anymore, laughing. Just yeah. like, like, I know I look like the psycho at the airport. All the I'm in the airport. Do. I'm at the airport more than I am in my house. And I'm always like sitting at a gate just laughing it up because I'm watching some, you know, some. For sure. It's yeah, hard to keep up with all the little yeah. trends and challenges yeah. and all that other stuff that they keep doing. Well, JC, I appreciate, I appreciate everything, man. The knowledge is, the knowledge is amazing I'm that you taught us. Always a pleasure, man. Now, next time we're in LV, I want to figure something out where we can come pull up on you 
and just kind of do like a tour of how Oh yeah, I'd love for you guys work. to come down whenever you we'll guys We'll do a whole wanna, episode on yeah, it. Yeah, whenever you guys have a little bit of time, if you want to check out and, and we share some more best business practices, I'm, I'm with it all day. Bro. And we also realized when we went to the store, we didn't try the ice cream. billion flavors. So. I got this ice cream shop, the Billy's my business partner. Billy's my my Frenchie. And I'm assuming that's what this, this is right here? Yeah, when you got a Frenchie that makes you over a million dollars, you get it tatted on your face because yeah. I don't think it's going away anyway, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, there's so. it.